for the delay now. Are we ready? Okay. Oh no. What happened? <laughs> I didn't touch anything. Um, what happened? Huh? Oh, wait. <laughs> it doesn't like the port. All right, out of here. Uh. Okay, whatever. Okay. And um, let me just go back one slide before before we go to presentation. Can you do that thing with the display settings? You just mirror that. Um. Because it's extending. What is this? No, this isn't where we want display settings.
as I said, this was um, tested the first thing this morning. Really? What I'm stressing. <laughs> okay. Anyway, all right, we're winging this um, without the notes. Um, the, um, and so hopefully I'll remember everything that I wanted to say. Um, <clears throat> IMA policy support for FS Verity is really a win-win for IMA and FS Verity. Um, this has been a long time in coming, but we're finally there, just from whatever, for whatever reasons. Um, <clears throat> the talk is going to talk, of, I'm going to be talking, starting out with the, um, um, the goals for IMA, going through the problems and what um, this work um, for both IMA and FS Verity, the background information, what's missing in each of them, and the solution, how we resolved it. Um, we'll go through um, the different policies and how this is a win-win for um, IMA and FS Verity. Um, we'll show the policy rules so that you can actually use it. It was upstreamed in the most recent open window. Um, and let's get going. So the original goals of IMA have not changed. The new features have been added. And this is taken from the white paper that my colleague Dave Safford wrote. Um, it's still on the wiki. Um, and the base ideas haven't changed. New features have been added. Um, so it's basically the detective files have been accidentally accidentally or maliciously altered both remotely and locally, appraise the files measurement against a good value stored as an extended attribute and sometimes as an appended signature now, and enforce local file integrity. So when we talk about this, this is basically what you get from secure and trusted boot. Um, the problem has been why this is, hasn't been so pervasive is that there's a lot of setup required. Um, system setup for, um, for secure boot, you need the signatures, you need the key management, and you need policy rules. And on the trusted boot side, you basically, um, it's very, the, the um, setup is rather simple, although the policy when isn't that simple, but we'll get to policy later. Um, and it's a minimal setup for um, trusted boot, and the po there's a lot more post-processing involved in it. Um, we, from the very beginning, we were asked to include, um, to expose the IINT structure, which contains the hashes for, um, for, for, for some forensics work. Whether or not that's still being used, when you work in the Linux kernel, you never know who is using what or when. Um, so the initial policy design um, was to minimize the system performance pack, um, to make sure that it's flexible for all different use cases, and to limit the frequency of measuring and praising files, again, due to performance. So if we go back to um, the balancing, if you measure to and this, there was a lot of discussions before this was upstreamed as to how much to measure. The initial papers referred to really were cognizant that the TPM was, um, was very slow and that you needed to really consider how much you were measuring. So, but there's a balance between measuring too much um, and having performance impact and measuring too little and not having full integrity of your system. So um, we, <clears throat> so somebody asked, um, you know, that um, Yana Kahuna said to me, which is more important, the TCB, which is the original policies, or is it the user data? The TCB can always be replaced. Um, you just reinstall the files, you know, you reinstall your system and your TCB is already back. But the user data is more important. So when you define a policy 
and trying to get the flexibility for all the different cases, it's hard. You don't know who's going to be wanting to do what, um, for what reasons. And then we have the situation of not doing, not measuring, not appraising too often, not doing things too often, because caching adds complexity and it makes it really, really difficult for namespacing. Because unlike on the system where the cache doesn't disappear on you, well now with namespacing, the cache is going to disappear and you have the locking problems of the de-entry coming at the same time that the, the um, cache can be removed. So yes, caching is good and it provides the performance, but we're, when we talk about I'm a namespacing, this is an issue. Um, these were the initial policy designs. We've gone through a lot of things on adding new types of signatures um, and um, like appended, we have now support for appended signatures for verifying the k-exec image. Um, we're not limited to verifying just the security x adder. Um, so in terms of policy, the policy language has been extended, but not the enforcement how you load a policy, how you do anything else, and there are more things that could be done with that. Um, obviously, everything has to be backward compatible because this is the Linux kernel and things that don't just disappear because you ask them to. Okay, so what is missing and why is this, why am I giving this talk? Why was um, support for FS Verity upstreamed? Basically, IMA reads the file, and just like for the TCG standards, it has to read the whole file, and it has to verify that file before access is given to access or execution, whatever it is, or the measurement is extended into the TPM and added to the measurement list, has to happen before the file can, control can be um, handed over. Um, this relies on iVersion to detect whether or not there has been any changes. We do want to minimize the number of measurements in the measurement list, and that can be, there's a number of different ways of doing that. But um, we're dependent on iVersion, and if iVersion isn't there, then um, we remeasure. Um, there's no way around it. We can't, we have no other way of knowing whether or not the file has changed. Um, and this affects Fuse, the Fuse file systems. Do you trust Fuse? We certainly don't have any inside, insights into what Fuse, a Fuse file system actually is doing. So it always has to remeasure it. Um, <clears throat> so the problem with reading the entire file is the performance, depending on the size of your file. And for that reason, um, um, so, and not only is it the size of the file, it's also that if the file is, um, is um, removed from de-entry, when it comes back, it isn't revalidated. And there are a number, and the information here, the malicious block devices, the firmware attacks, at the end of the slides, there's a list of, um, there are two references. One is to, um, to Mike Halcrow and Eric Bigger's talk from LSS talk from 2018. And then there's another um, paper that was written on this problem um, of not re-verifying the file when it comes back from de-entry, from when it's been evicted and comes back from the page cache. <clears throat> so before we go on, are there any questions to FS, before we go on to FS Verity, are there any questions up to this point? Okay, so um, we're going to, when m all of this information is taken from the kernel, from the kernel docs, from the slides, from the talk, and from the um, sample applications, um, FS Verity. Um, sample applications. So FS Verity is a support layer. The file systems can hook into a support tran 
transparent integrity and authenticity protection of read-only files. Um, currently, it's supported on ext4, f2fs, and butterfs file systems. Um, so FS Verity, instead of verifying reading the entire file, it breaks up the file into chunks and puts those chunks into a Merkle tree. And the Merkle tree, the root in the Merkle tree is the signature with the other file metadata. Um, and that's your, um, that's the FS Verity digest. So this is, it's not required that the, F, the Merkle, you need to create the Merkle tree. You need to, um, to create the, to get the root hash and to be able to in, um, include other file metadata in the, um, in the, in the FS Verity digest. The, <clears throat> you, it's not required, the design doesn't require it, but on, on the file systems currently that support FS Verity, the Merkle tree is stored um, after the file data, as well as the FS descriptor. So the benefits of not verifying, then not calculate, not having to calculate the full file hash, um, is to be able to do partial reads. Um, <clears throat> and, and the benefit is that as the file is read from disk, um, it's verified. Each block is verified as you read it. Um, but unlike um, with full file data hashes, um, um, there are possible read failures. So depending on your use case, you might want to know ahead of time whether or not it's going to fail or not. Think critical infrastructure. OK, so <clears throat> FS Verity feature is a hashing mechanism only. It optionally supports a simple signature verification mechanism. Um, and authenticating files is left up to user space, meaning that whatever policy you have has to be in user space. Um, it's not. Um, so um, when we talk about FS Verity, what it needs, um, we can, it need, um, if we wanted to include the um, measurements of a file in in the IMA measurement list, it's um, it, you can't just read the file because then you defeat the poor, read the file, calculate the file hash, and then land up with that in the measurement. That kind of defeats FS Verity. So what we really want is to include the FS Verity file digest in the IMA measurement list. Um, and we also um, want to support um, having a policy for what to measure what to appraise and going forward in the kernel. This was the, having it in the kernel was the main reason for IMA being upstreamed in the first place. So this is basically a win-win for IMA and FS Verity. For FS Verity gets the digests and signatures in the IMA measurement list and enforces FS Verity based file signatures stored in security IMA the X adder, and it, close, it closes, I, FS Verity closes the IMA integrity gap for files evicted from page cache because as it reads the file back in, it's going to verify um, the, the um, block, the data that's being read in. Um, again, we said originally that FS Verity currently only does um, read only files, so we're not talking about configuration files. We're talking about only read-only files. So we're up to now how this is um, being um, implemented. So we need to differentiate when, they're in, when the FS Verity measurements are included in the IMA measurement list. We really need to be able to differentiate which is an FS Verity file and which is um, the original IMA file. I'm a, um, I'm a 
ha file hash. So we defined a new template called um, IMA NGV2. It's exactly the same as before. The only difference, as you'll see over here, um, is that it's prefixed with the name, the type of digest. Um, and you'll notice that um, the SHA-256 sum, it's a straight file hash, is included um, in the measurement list, and it matches the, sig and the hash down here. OK. Um, and when we do this for FS Verity, um, now you have the F Verity as being the type of signature that you're including. When you do, instead of a SHA-256 um, sum, you're now doing a FS Verity digest. And that digest is included down here. Oops. Can't hit enter. Um, and so now you, have, you can differentiate what type of um, um, measurements are included in the um, measurement list. <clears throat> and similarly, we want to be able to have the same type of information on the IMA SIG template. So we defined IMA SIG v2 template. And here you have um, the IMA. Um, it's prefixed with IMA. You have the normal um, um, signature. That's the EVM IMA XADR signature. And it's a version 2. And it's um, 04. All of these are enumerations that are included in the various uh, include files. But this, but we have one more step to go. We now have a signature, but the FS very, we can differentiate it in the measurement list, but differentiating and making sure that the FS Verity signature is not being used to verify the, you know, that they're not interchangeable. We want to make sure that they're included um, and you can use, know exactly which signature is which. Uh, so we defined, a, we defined a signature version 3, which instead of including just the um, file digest, um, it includes the file digest plus some other file metadata, such as the hash algorithm. Um, yeah, I think it's the, just the hash algorithm. Um, so here we now have the FS Verity measurement entry in the measurement list. Again, with signature V2, you have um, it's prefixed with Verity down here. It's prefixed with Verity. You have a new signature type, and it's a, and a new signature version that's not the um, just the direct um, file. Um, file hash, but a hash, but it indirectly signs the signature v3. And since we want to be able to say um, that we want only FS Verity files or only IMA files, um, file signatures, if you have a policy, if you have a file that's signed with the wrong, with the incorrect signature, you'll end up with the zeros um, as the measurement. Because it wasn't, in the FS Verity case, it wasn't able to collect the, the file hash. Um, it wasn't able to read the digest. So um, this prevent, and it's pretty clear that you weren't verify, that you can't verify an FS Verity file if it's not signed with FS Verity. OK, so how do we, um, how do we sign this? There, the IMA EVM Utils program, um, I've posted patches for um, being able to verify the, for being able to sign files. Um, and we're not using the same mechanism that we currently use for um, signing files for IMA, because basically you read the file and you calculate the file hash. Here, we're dependent on FS Verity providing us the digest. So, um, so we can 
use FSFERity Digest to collect the file digest and then pipe it into EVM control. You can um, pipe in an entire file and the output of the file is this similar to SHA-256 sum. It gives you the, um, the hash, the, the digest, the file name, and the output will be appended with the signature at the end. And afterwards, you need to um, take, you can process that entire file and read it out, or um, using a script to read the last um, field and to use set F adder to write out the signature as security.ima. And a lot of thanks to Eric Biggers for his help with the design and code review. Similarly, for Stefan Berger for reviewing the design and code. And my colleagues, Nana, J Nana George, and Elaine for, for many discussions on why do we need a new, sign um, a new signature version um, for FS Verity. Why isn't it enough? Um, why couldn't we just sign the hashes as it was? And we came to the conclusion that this is fine. Um, it differentiates the file, the IMA file signatures from the FS Verity signatures so that they can't be intermixed. Um, and, to, and the appreciation for the title of this talk goes to Elaine. Any questions? <laughs> I'm laughing because I asked someone to, um, <clears throat> I, I just gave, oh, and the main point, oh, wow. Okay, I'll answer your question, and then I'll go back to a slide where I met, left out the most important piece of information. Um, yes, I asked someone to do the performance um, analysis to see if there's any difference. The assumption is, is that the file on file open, it will be, um, for large files and small files, it's going to be the same exact thing for FS Verity, whereas with, um, with IMA, the, the amount of time, it won't be, um, will not, will be, is different for small files and large files, whether or not you're appraising the file or measuring the file. Um, the TPM adds, perform, it has a um, performance which gets, um, hidden when you have large files um, and impacts performance. But I'm assuming that small and large files will be exactly the same and all the burden is on FS Verity. But the main thing that I left out because I didn't have my speaker notes here is oh, come on. We have to go all the way back. Yeah, this slide, is that little line on the very bottom. Um, <clears throat> basically, up to now, I started to say that, um, that it's hard to get having people to use IMA, um, especially in the circuit boot mode, because getting the file signatures being distributed with, every, um, with the metadata, with the file data, is very, was very long in coming. But I'm happily, happy to say that RHEL 9 um, was released with file signatures, sent OS 9, Stream 9 has the signatures, and Fedora 37 will have the signatures. Um, so I'm looking forward to, now that we have this all there, I'm looking forward to people using it and really getting the benefit of it. It's been a long time coming. Any other questions?
very good because you have to take measurements for every file because you don't know whether you have already taken measurement of that file before. If you but if you um, wanted to have a cache, then you can have to take a look up in the cache. And personally, I do not see um, the having these RP streams that I showed yesterday uh, on a per IM on interface basis. I don't think that makes the problem so much bigger. I think the problem would become if you run lots of IMA interfaces on your machine, you run uh, various scripts in them, and they all take measurements continuously, and the logs become used, which you could avoid if then you have to cache. I think that, in my opinion, is the bigger problem. So caching and, and extending the TPM are two different questions. All right, I, I guess I'm supposed to be repeating the question. Stefan S. is asking whether or not um, what is the alternative if we don't cache for IMA namespacing? And what is the performance impact? So I don't know what the performance impact would be, but we do need to differentiate between measuring the file, um, repeatedly measuring the file like we do for fused file systems, like there's another file system that doesn't have iVersion support, um, and the issue of um, and extending the TPM. So I'm not sure how much, I mean, it, it won't go into the measurement list. The subsequent measure, in other words, when you reevaluate the file, it, the hash is already there in the measurement list, and it won't be re-added to the measurement list. So the performance is the cache is preventing you from recalculating the file hash. Yes, you said cache. You need the cache, right? The ca I'm saying that if you have the cache, it prevents you from recalculating the cache. OK, but now that we have FS Verity, um, opening a small file and opening a, clo a small file, uh, a large file and a small file, will not have the same performance impact because we're not calculating the file hash. We're relying on FS Verity to provide it to us. So therefore, that impetus for having the cache might not be as important. And I don't, and correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, FS Verity, we've said, is only for read-only files, read-only files. And so if you now have if you're limiting what you're verifying to, um, to configurations that have to be hashed and then to use EVM for the file, to sign the file metadata, then maybe caching isn't that important because small files like configuration files won't take that long. I don't know. The, the, the original, it was, it was for the original IMA namespacing where you needed the cache. You really needed the cache. It was not related to FS Verity. The log doesn't grow. It is prevented because the hash is the same hash and it will not be added to the measurement list. It will not be added to the I'm a measurement list again. Um, any other questions? Thank you.